Yo, 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 what's going on? It's your man Lowe. Mel Anx, why I cry, MGTOW till I die. Want to give a shout out to the entire MGTOW verse. What's going on, daddy? What's crack a lacking? Today, I'm going to comment on one of my favorite YouTubers. Well, actually, I've been doing this, so it's nothing new. Sarge WP. Uh, great, great content. Great delivery. He recently made a video called inappropriate behavior where he talks about a rise in quote unquote buck dancing cooning bojangling um jive time turkeys okay i understand where sarge is coming from but one of the first things sarge said in his video regarding what he what his whole video is summed up to this he's saying that there are black people that are going to get praise from white people and rewards from white people and avoid punishment from white people by throwing black people under the bus and he says the reason why that there are these quote unquote double agents coons buffoons uncle toms etc etc is because there is no black community and the black community can't provide them with anything. He goes on to say that they're deprived, that there's no infrastructure in the black community and therefore there is no black community and therefore there is no allegiance from these Uncle Toms. Right in there lies the hole in Sarge's argument. Because Sarge goes on to say that he likens them to Vietnam vets that snitch all over the place, like a, Viet a POW, like a prisoner at war, who will snitch on his comrades to get a bar of soap. He's in a dire situation and he needs a little bit of comfort. So he's going to snitch to the North Vietnamese or the Viet Cong or what have you, whatever forces are against them, to get a bar of soap and he'll snitch on one of his comrades and turn one of his comrades in. The whole in Sarge's argument lies in the definition of community. Because one minute Sarge says that there is no black community because there is no infrastructure, there is no network of black people who can provide opportunities for other black people. Therefore, they don't feel an adhesion. But then he goes on to say they're snitching on us, they're doing this to us, they're throwing us under the bus as if there is a community. So my question to you, Sarge, if you're listening to this, I'm right now driving. If you can hear me, there's a little truck next to me. Hold on, let me let me let this motherfucker pass real quick. Okay. My question to you, Sarge, is is there or is there not a black community? And if there is, point me to it and to, and show me a functional black community that's providing resources because they're in you in your in your video, I don't, I'm not saying that you're making an argument in your video, Sergeant WP, but I am saying that the information in your, in your video provides a dualistic approach because one minute you, because you're giving your, I don't, I'm not, and I'm not saying you're answering the opposition, which is different. Answering the opposition is sort of like what, um, what the, in the classical, uh, in the classical Julius Caesar, when, uh, Mark Anthony answered to the opposition of Brutus by pointing out all the things that Caesar's done, but also saying that Brutus is a noble man. So what you're doing is you're saying these are all the reasons why black people are quote unquote African Americans are doing what they're doing. They're all valid reasons, yet and still they're not noble for taking these actions. But the question is, Sarge, if and then, oh, and then, oh, yeah, one last thing. And he he, 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 play, he he does this phrase, which I absolutely love. He says, then white people will come together like Voltron. <laughs> you know, it's like I get this picture of like, you know, form feet and legs, form arms and body, and I'll form the head. But what, a couple of fallacies here. One thing Sarge doesn't understand is the white community is not, is not a conscious a consciously formed community in the sense that white people like black people 
think about white pride and binding together because they're all white. Granted, we live in a society where we're a minority in the country, which Sarge did point out. So in this country where, where there's less people that look like us, you wouldn't expect things to be tailored to our tastes. And who's to say that the tastes we've developed haven't developed as a part of communion with and mixing with the individuals in the majority? And who's to say that white people don't have some of their tastes from some of the things that black people like? I tend to look at the American society slash community even the mainstream as a mixture of things that from different ethnicities that people like and people people use across races and across ethnicities for example there's a lot of black people that eat chinese food okay they eat chinese food but they're not saying well you know black pride black pride we're not going to eat this food because it, it doesn't come from us which would also be a misnomer because the African American is a mixed, is a comes from a mixed ethnic background. But what it is is that why is this person, Sarge, if you're listening, why is this person a coon? Who are they betraying? Who are they? Who are they betraying? Because. Just because we look alike doesn't mean we're going to think alike. The African-American Negro does not live in a vacuum. He does not live in an economy where he can generate all of his resources within his own economy. He needs to generate, and you, and you pointed this out in your video, he gets his resources, he gets his success from outside of the quote unquote black community. So, like you say, and I'm asking you, why does he? Why would he have an allegiance to a narrative of blackness that not all black people subscribe to? It doesn't. It's not the same thing as a veteran, Sarge. Veterans, they all subscribe to being a uh, soldiers. All subscribe to being a soldier for a country because they either were signed up or drafted by benefit of or. Or in detriment to living in a certain society that requires them or they choose to take up arms in office as a soldier. Knowing damn well that if you're a soldier or if you're like, let's say you're a gang member, let's let's use a parallel. When you throw on that red rag, you know that when you go into a crip neighborhood, you could get you could get assassinated. Knowing damn well that if you if you're from the MS-13, and you go into a Sur Trece neighborhood, you could get lit up. So these are things that soldiers do because they consciously make a choice and they consciously make a decision to fight for one side or another. Or, by, by benefit or detriment of living in a certain society, they have to or they choose to fight for one side or another. But they're aware they're aware that the problem with black people, Sarge, is they are not aware. And if they're not aware, then whatever concept that they come up with it does not really exist, like you say, in real time. Because it's a concept, but it's not held up by, by a unified truth. And we don't have a unified truth because, okay, of a few things. Yes, yes, the African American population is disjointed. The origins of which do come from slavery. And I'm going to acknowledge that the origin of black um, African American in America, the origin of the problem does and the disjointed unity does lie in slavery. But even though an origin, like, and we've discussed this, Sarge, we've we haven't discussed this, but you've discussed this about inventions just because something an invention was created to solve one problem does not mean it's brought to market successfully by solving the initial problem that created sometimes it's able to solve a different problem that it was unintended to to solve and brought to market in that way and flourishes in that way so yes while the origins of african-american disjointedness and disunity are in 
are in white supremacy in the sense that they were slave masters and owners of capital and black people weren't if you're looking at it from the color perspective because we weren't the only society that did have slavery there were other societies that had slavery the, what makes us unique is because the the slavers were one color and the and the slaves were another color but now that we've we already understand this what are we going to do going forward are we going to continue to shoot each other are we going to get are you going to continue to jump each other because because the threat of violence and physical harm in real time for most black people sarge comes from other black people so i mean i can attest to a, to personal stories that that the problems that i faced growing up i had i had problems with white people i lived in a, in a mixed mixed race community i had problems with white people but that was that was an exception and it was only when i and i admit when i started some shit with white people it was rarely that a white person just out of the blue came up and started some shit with me it happened though but most of the time but it, it was like i could count that on one hand or less like a few fingers most of the time, the shit that happened to me was that ha that came from white people was they had already been familiar with me and we had beef. But most of the other beefs came from black people. OK, now, while we did have a narrative of slavery and and there was oppression in those times, my question is, why do we need to continue? Why do we need to continue in this path simply because? We, we, we start off one way. I mean, as human beings, we should have we have the we have the ability. This is what gives us makes us a different from animals. We're able to make choices against what's instinctually what's our instinct is. We're able to make choices. And that differentiates us because we could take a different trajectory. We can then what was original within the course that was originally set by our ancestors. While the course that was set by our ancestors heavily influences the trajectory that we're on, we at any time can say, you know what? This narrative is not working for me. This narrative is not working for me. Black people killing each other, it's not working for me. Black people and, 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 and child support and this uh, and baby mama drama and all this stuff, it's not working for me. I choose my own path. I go my own way. MGTOW. And that's why the MGTOW movement is so important, especially for black people, because they can see that they don't need to pussy hound and bojangle or do whatever it is you say they need to, they're doing because they don't have to think on, in terms of group speak. They can behave in their own way based on what's beneficial and detrimental to them. And if that means and if and if white if white society is holding is holding them, if quote unquote, white society is holding majority of assets. There's only two ways that black people can get their hands on. One of them, one of them is like you said, they could take them. But that's not effective because of the way laws enforced. But I propose another way. Why don't you produce something of value so that white folks will want to trade with you and trade their goods for your goods and you make a profit on your surplus? Maybe that's the way. Maybe the way isn't trying to strong arm. Maybe the way is trying to learn and grow through creating value and trading but until that comes about that social thing ain't gonna work booker t over web all day every day your man low out